الحمد للہ وقف السلام علی عباد الدین استفا اما بعد فعود باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم افمن شرح اللہ صدر اسلام فہو علی نور من ربه سبحان ربک رب العزت اما یسفون و سلام علی المرسلین و الحمد للہ رب العالمین اللہم صلی علی سیدنا محمد و علی آلی سیدنا محمد و مبارک و سلم اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی ان قرآن کریم سید افمن شرح اللہ صدره And as for that person whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has expanded their breast, expanded their heart, lil-islam, for the deen of Islam, for iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fuhuwa ala nurim min rabbihi, then this person is on a nur from their Rabb. This is what is known as Arabic as inshirah al-sadr. In Urdu sometimes they call it sharh sadr In Arabic sometimes they call it sharh sudur This is that expanding of the breast with a nur from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does this mean? Different Mufasreen have said many things over here. Some Mufasreen say that the nur is the nur of hidayah. Some say the nur is the nur of iman. Some say the nur is the nur of Qur'an. Some say the nur is the nur of sunnah Nabi alayhi salam. All of these things are mentioned that whenever a person's heart and breast is expanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be on the deen of Islam, they are upon a nur. They enter into a nur. And where did that nur come? Min nurim min rabbihi. That is a nur that came to them from their rabb, from their Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means any one of us who views ourselves as a Muslim means we should reflect on this verse of Qur'an and we should try to feel that we are on that nur and inside that nur and we want to do hifazat and preserve that nur, acquire that nur, protect that nur and make sure we would never ever do anything on our own, of our own choice to lose even one drop of that nur. Inshirah al-Sadr Hafiz ibn Qayyim al-Juzir has written in detail in one of his books called Zad al-Ma'ad on the Asbab al-Shad al-Sadr on the different means and processes by which a person can get the Shad al-Sadr but before we proceed to that Sayyidina Rasulullah was once asked Sayyidina Abdullah bin Masood radiallahu mentions that when this verse was revealed and specifically the Arabic uses Iza Tala when Sayyidina Rasulullah recited this verse for the first time the Sahaba Kram they asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi sallam Kaifan sharha sadruhu that Ya Rasulullah sallam how is it that that person's breast gets expanded to this nur so the Prophet said إِذَا دَخْلَ النُّورُ الْقَلْبَ that when the nur from Allah SWT enters into their qalb when the nur from Allah SWT enters into their spiritual heart in the heart of the ruh in sharaha wa in fataha then their heart expands and becomes opened up then they said, Kulli Ya Rasulullah, we said, O beloved Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Wa ma alamatuhu dhalik, that what is the sign that that person receives this nur, this sharas other? Qal Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al inabutu ila dar al khulud, that they now become inclined towards the everlasting abode. Once the nur enters into their heart, all of their focus and yearning and aspiration and striving is for the akhirah for the everlasting hereafter, for the eternal home in which they will dwell in, with tajafi and dar al and now they abstain from, refrain from, or uninterested in dar al so This is why Sayyidina Rasulullah is explaining this world, not the temporary world, not, means ghurur means the world of deception, the world of illusion, the world of delusion. Just like a person sees a mirage in the desert, when they realize that it is fake, then they are concerned with the rest of their journey. So they view this world as a ghurur. What is the They are prepared for death before death overcomes them. They are ready for death. 
before Allah Ta'ala sends death upon them. So these are the signs that Sayyidina Rasulullah mentioned in the hadith that this is a person who has shar his sadr. This hadith was narrated by Imam Tirmidhi in his jami. Well, the first way, Khair Hafiz ibn Qayyum has gone into extreme detail. Very briefly, we're going to discuss some of these things tonight. Topic for tonight is how does a person get this shara sadr? How does a person get their heart and breast expanded for this new? So one of the things that Ibn Qayyum mentioned is Iman. Iman. What does Iman mean? Lest maybe some of us think we have already have Iman. <laughs> iman means that whatever Sayyidina Rasulullah told us, whether that be Qur'an, whether that be authentically transmitted hadith, whatever knowledge has come to us by means of Sayyidina Rasulullah to have Iman in that. Imam al Ghazai, he actually made Nabuwa, the essence of Iman, because even our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is because Sayyidina Rasulullah told us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists. Our belief that the Qur'an is authentic is because Sayyidina Rasulullah told us that the Qur'an is the word of Allah SWT. Our belief in Jannah, Jahannam, angels, Malaika, all of that is because Sayyidina Rasulullah told us that all of these things are true. Therefore in our heart we believe that all of these things are true. <laughs> so to believe in it entirely, absolutely, with certain conviction in our heart, Tazdeek bil qalb, that is called iman. And the person who has that feeling is called a mu'min. The person who has that feeling is called a mu'min. And Allah SWT has explained another aspect of iman in Quran. Alladheena yu'minuna bil ghayb. That they are people who believe in the unseen. They don't ask for a dhaleel, a hujjah, a burhan. They don't ask for a proof, a logic and demonstration. They believe in Allah SWT. They don't need to know. The questions that people ask today, that when will Qiyamah come? How will it come? What exactly is the nature of Jannah? What exactly is the nature of Jahannam? Who will be judged in what way? They don't need to know these things. And we are not mukallaf of that. We are not been made judges of humanity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the sole Malik of Yawmuddin. He is the judge. Nowhere in Quran. Does it ask us to answer this question to judge another person? What family they were born in, what religion they were born in, what is their outcome? We're not responsible for that. We don't have to give those answers to anyone. Yes, the things that we can say we do know for sure is Allah SWT is one. Allah SWT exists and Sayyidina Rasulullah ﷺ was the last and final prophet and messenger. And whatever Sayyidina Rasulullah ﷺ said is absolutely true. But that's what we know. And that's what we have to offer. Beyond that, there's much knowledge that Allah SWT has that He has not shared with us. That is not going to be the basis upon which we can answer or assess or decide about the deen of Islam. <coughs> so without any dalil to believe what Sayyidina Rasulullah Wasallam, that's what it means to take somebody as our Nabi. That's what it means to believe in someone as a prophet. This is why Allah SWT sends with all, sent with all of the Anbiya mu'jizat. Mu'jizat means miracles. Absolute miracles, nothing to do with logic and rationality and demonstration and proof. To show people that a Nabi is precisely that human being who you are going to believe in, you are going to follow blindly. That's what it means to accept somebody as a Nabi. Nabi Akim is not our professor, he's not our scholar, he's not our philosopher, he's our prophet. And because he's our Nabi and our Rasul and our Prophet, we will absolutely unconditionally follow and believe in each and every single thing that he told us. That is what it means to have Iman. That is what it means to have Iman. And as and much as much as a person gets this Iman, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expand their breast and their heart on this nur that comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iman in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Iman in all the books, all the messengers, all the angels, life after death, the day of judgment, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's power and will reigns absolute. Another place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Quran, and He's made it clear that there are only two types of human beings. Either you have Iman or you don't have Iman. 
This is one of those issues that is absolutely black and white in the world. Black and white in Quran. Allah SWT says in Quran, هُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ فَمِنْكُمْ كَافِرْ وَمِنْكُمْ مُؤْمِنْ That Allah SWT is that being who has created each and every one of you, O humanity, has created each and every human being. And from amongst you there will be some who are, choose to be un- who are unbeliever and some who choose to be believer. In another ayah Allah Ta'ala said in Quran, مَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ Whosoever wants, let him adopt iman. وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْفِرْ And whosoever wants, let him deny the existence of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Let him reject Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Let him disbelieve Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. But there are only two categories. وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَسِيرٌ And indeed Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is extremely aware and all-knowing of every single thing that you do. Means here that our a'mal, our, our actions are either going to be actions of iman or actions of kufr. Iman is not just a feeling. Iman is reflected in our actions, our acts, our sayings, our deeds, our feelings, our thoughts. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about each and every one of those things is basir. And each and everything we do will be tagged. Either it is an act worthy of iman or is an act unworthy of iman, rejecting iman, neglecting iman, i.e. an act of kufr. Not necessarily atheist, not necessarily disbelieving in the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but is this an amal of a mu'min or is this an amal of a ghair mu'min? Is that person's behavior, adab and akhlaq, that of a mu'min? Or is their adab and akhlaq, that of a ghair mu'min? Every single thing will be classified in one of these two ways. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has so much love for the believers, <coughs> so much love for the believers, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enmity for the unbelievers. In other words, another thing that is black and white is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala feels about these two choices. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala feels about these two types of beings. That person who is a mu'min gets what is called the zat, zati muhabba of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Gets the pure, essential love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that person who chooses not to be a mu'min gets the adawa, uduwa, gets the personal enmity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes? That person who sees Iman, knows Iman, but chooses to reject or to deny Iman, gets the enmity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Quran, Allah waliyu alladheena amanu, yukhrijuhum minu dhulumati ila nur. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the people of Iman so much that He becomes their wali. He becomes their intimate, beloved, protecting, nurturing friend. And then, Personally, directly, يُقْرِجُهُمْ مِنَ الظُّلَمَاتِ إِلَى النُورِ He takes them out from all of the darknesses in their life, إِلَى النُورِ Into that same nur that came in the Shara Sadr. Into the nur of Hidayah, the nur of Deen. And then Allah SWT says about the second group, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَوْلِيَاءُهُمُ التَّغُوتِ And the people who disbelieve, who are their friends, Shaitan and his minions. That's who they get as a wali. It's just one Two choices. Either Allah Ta'ala is our wali or shaitan is our wali. <coughs> what does happen to those people? Those shayateen yukhrijoonahum min al-nuri ila dhulumat. They take them out from the nur, the possibility of accepting iman, and they bring them into dhulumat, into darkness and sin. Now imagine <coughs> that if some king of the world told some peasant of the world that I am your wali, Allah Akbar, <laughs> the peasant would be stunned. <laughs> and he said, this king has told me, the peasant, the subject, the servant, the slave, right, that I am your wali, he would be so happy. He would be in a state of ecstasy. He would be overjoyed that the king has come and personally told me that he is my wali and that he is going to take me out from every single issue into solution. Well, if that is true for a king, well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is far, far, far greater than a king. And relative to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are far, far, far lower than a peasant. So imagine how happy a mu'min should be when Allah ta'ala told him in Quran, Allahu waliyu alladheena amanu. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the wali of the alladheena amanu, the people of Iman. This phrase, alladheena amanu, this is who and what we are. 
And many young men and women today, they never think about this. Because they don't feel their iman, they're not aware and conscious of their iman, therefore they don't feel the wilayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is promised with the iman. Because they're neglectful and forgetful of the existence of their very iman, they're neglectful and forgetful and unaware of Allah ta'ala's wilayat that is promised with that iman. Just leading lives that are hapless and heedless, ghafir, sust, hmm? Unaware. And in English they try to fool you, they call this happy go lucky. Allah <laughs> Akbar. Huh? He's a happy go lucky. Oh, he's not happy. <laughs> he's very unhappy. And he's not lucky. He's very unlucky. Hmm? Yes? Unhappy, unlucky, unfortunate, misfortunate, depraved, and deprived existence. When you don't feel the nur of Iman, and you don't get the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why. Shaykh Wajah Bayezid Mustamiri Ta'ala He used to mention that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala loves the believers So somebody asked him So he said first we have to understand the principle of love The principle of love, principle of mahabba There is a muhib, a lover And a mahabub, a beloved The principle of love is that whenever a lover gives something to their beloved No matter how much they give, how much they give They always think I didn't give enough they always think that whatever I gave was nothing, was unworthy of my beloved. It's just a trifle, it's just petty, is minute. No matter how much they give. From the flip side, whatever they get from their beloved, even if it's very small, even if it's just a drop, because it came from their beloved, they view it as immense, as enormous value. It's extremely important. That's why, for example, in our mother's system, whenever a teacher used to reward someone, even with one rupee, he would take that one rupee and it would, that one rupee, because it one rupee coin, literally, because it came from their teacher, it would mean more to them than receiving one lakh rupee. <laughs> right? So when Shaykh Bayezid Bustamir Ta'ala explained this principle, then he said in Quran, then look what Allah Ta'ala said in Quran, وَإِن تَعُلُّوا نَعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُسُوهَا That if you were to try to count the blessings of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, you would never be able to enumerate them, you would never be able to encompass them. Unlimited, Allah Ta'ala has given us unlimited, infinite blessings. But because Allah Ta'ala is our lover, and the principle of love is whenever the lover gives something to their beloved, no matter how enormous it may be, even in this case infinite, uncountable, they will view it as very small. That's what Allah Ta'ala said in Quran, Kul mata dunya qaleel. That say my beloved messenger says unto them, that this whole dunya, and everything that is in it, is just a trifle. All the blessings that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gives to us, He views it as just a trifle. And second side was when the beloved gives something to the lover. Even if it's small, the lover views it as something great. So what is it that we offer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is our dhikr, our dua, our ibadah, our salah, right? Our worship and remembrance. Now what type of worship and remembrance can we offer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Extremely little, petty, few, insignificant moments of our life. Hmm? What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about that dhikr though? Allah ta'ala says in Quran, وَالذَّاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَالذَّاكِرَاتِ And the male mu'mineen who remember Allah ta'ala kathir. So when Allah ta'ala mentioned all of the bounties in this world that He gave us, He used the word qaleel in Quran. And when He talked about the zikr that we offer Him, no matter how small it was, He called it kathir in Quran. So it means that according to the principle of love, that is actually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the lover and we are the beloved. As long as a person has iman and feels the feelings of iman and is able to preserve the nur of that iman and is able to keep their heart and breast expanded and full of that iman in their life. <laughs> a person, mu'min, and any person, but a mu'min especially has any person has three blessings, a mu'min has a fourth one. Every person has the blessing, ni'mat of life itself is a ni'mat. Our wealth, property, possessions are also a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And our izza, our honor, our dignity is also a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the mu'min has another blessing and that is called the ni'mat of iman, the blessing of iman.
Now, if you look in this world, sometimes you have to pick between these blessings. Sometimes you have to choose between these blessings. So, for example, if a person is sick and they have a life-threatening illness, in order to save their life, they will spend all of their money. No problem. They will be willing to spend more money, all their money on getting a cure. If somebody asks them, that, what are you doing? Isn't money valuable to you? So they say, yes, money is valuable to me, but for the sake of my life, and saving my life and preserving my life, I can give up all of my money. I could sacrifice all of my money to stay alive. Alright? Then, <coughs> that same money, in other words, that was invaluable, highly valuable before, is sacrificed for the netma of life. Then, somebody's life. There are some cases in life that a person would be willing to give up their own life for the sake of their izza. For example, if somebody attacks someone in their home, or a man is attacked with his wife, in order to save the honor and dignity of his wife, he's willing to give up his own life. <laughs> now that same money that was so invaluable, but was able to be sacrificed for life, that same life that was so invaluable, we can sacrifice that for our izza. For the mu'min, he should be willing to sacrifice life and money and izza, all for the sake of their iman. All for the sake of their iman. But, in this day and age, because we live in an age of fitna and fasad, we live in an age where people lose their iman, they lapse in their iman, they undervalue their iman, they don't appreciate the value of their iman. Shaykh Sa'di Rimullahu Ta'ala, he writes about himself that when he was a child, his mother had given him a gold ring, small child, and he left home, went out one day. And then there was someone who was a criminal, thief type, and he saw that, look at this little young wedgie boy, and he's wearing a gold ring. So he called him and said, come here young boy. And he took out some, you can say, candy. And he told him that, take your ring off. So he took his ring off. And he told him, suck on your ring. <laughs> he put the gold ring in his mouth. Then he said, now suck on this, and gave him the candy. So the little boy sucked on the candy. Obviously the candy was sweet, the candy had pleasure. And when he sucked on the gold ring, there was no pleasure. So then he told him, that young boy, why didn't you take what is pleasurable, and give me what is not pleasurable? So he gave the gold ring, and he took the candy. And he writes, because I was a young boy, I was a child, I could not appreciate the value of gold, <laughs> but I could appreciate the value of candy. Just like that, we have become like that in this world. The iman that we have in our heart is like the gold ring. And the pleasures of this world, all of those lazat is like the candy. <laughs> so we have become talib al we have become abdul lutf, we have become the servant and slave and creature of our desires and passion for the pleasures of this world. <laughs> Why? Because we don't value the iman that we have in our heart. For example, Sayyidina Rasulullah wasallam said, Al-hayā'u shu'batun min al-īmān. Another hadith said, Al-hayā'u iman. Hayā, which means our purity, our chastity, our modesty is iman itself. <laughs> When the gold ring of Haya was given to us, when we had Iman, but we choose to trade that gold ring for the candies and pleasures of this world. <laughs> Somebody may trade it for what even in this English, American they call eye candy, even they call it that. <laughs> yes, they will misdirect their gaze. Someone will do even worse. Trading the pleasures of Iman for the pleasures of this world. Just like Shaykh Sa'di Ramtai when he was a child, then he lost that ring. Just like that, that mu'min, they lose the pleasures of Iman. They no longer feel pleasure in Salah. They don't enjoy reading Qur'an. They have no desire to make du'a. They do not know the lazat of taqwa. They do not know the lazat of sabr. They do not know the lazat of tawakkul. They have lost the halawat of iman. They lose the pleasures of iman because they traded them for the sake of the pleasures of this world. And just like that criminal thief, 
tricked Sheikh Saadi Ramtai as a child. Just like that Shaitan and the Shayateen and all of his forces and even human beings who are wittingly and unwittingly. That's what Allah says again, Min al jinni wal ins. From the jinn and from the insan. And some of the insan unknowingly. In the name of media, fashion, culture, society, ideology, philosophy. Just taking away people's iman. Allah Akbar. <laughs> they can feel the pleasure of the philosophy of Aristotle. They are mahroom of the pleasure of the manifat of Quran. <laughs> they can enjoy the pleasure of the philosophy of Marx and Engels. And they are mahroom of the manifat of the words of the Prophet Sallallahu collected in Bukhari and Muslim. Allah Akbar. Yes. <laughs> they lose this pleasure. <laughs> Because they choose to run after that pleasure. And even worse, people today, they do it very laughingly, jokingly, mockingly, lightly. You'd be amazed. You know, I myself have been raised in, let's say, secular liberal elite Pakistani family. And when I used to hear people, when I used to hear people, because I only knew my family members, when I used to hear people say that no, these ultra elites or elites or educated elites, bad bedine, I would say no. Look, this is a stereotype. This is a negative stereotype. This is a misunderstanding. For the large part of my life, because Alhamdulillah, at least my own family was not involved in sin, so I thought doing kiyas on my own family that this is a negative stereotype. Now after spending, and this lasted all the way up to 2005, then from 2005 up till now, seven years, I have been engaged in the university youth of this country. I've thought literally thousands of people. Allah Akbar, I can tell you, it's no stereotype. It's no stereotype, it's actually true. The vast majority of young men and women who have a university level or higher education between the ages of 18 to 30 in this English educated class of this country, the vast majority, so it's not some Molvi telling you, <laughs> hey, hey Molvi, right? <laughs> but it's a <laughs> person telling you not because he's a Molvi, <laughs> but because of my experience, the vast majority do not value their Iman. Vast majority, not even majority. Vast majority are losing and slipping away in their iman. But the only difference is, is that some of them have lost all the nur, some of them have lost most of the nur, and some of them have lost some of the nur. Very few and far between, handfuls, point zero 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 something percent of this age group of 18 to 30, English educated university and above, who actually still have all the nur of their iman. Handful, handful of such people. Allah Akbar Kabeera. Where did the nur go? Where did the nur go? It went into this pleasure, into that pleasure. They traded. They're sucking on all the candies of the world. And they lost the nur of their iman. Allah Akbar Kabeera. And Allah Ta'ala said in Quran, that what is that person on? Nur min rabbihi. Not just any nur. Not just any nur. Nur from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hmm? That's why they're called Rabbaniyin in Quran. Yes, the people who preserve and are drowned in the nur from their Rabb, they're called Rabbaniyin. Rabbani in singular. Hmm? Rabb wala, nur wala, Allah wala, Allah ta'ala ka nur wala. It's a lost treasure. It's a missing treasure. To read our job. <coughs> to discover that treasure. Rediscover that treasure. Sayyidina Rasulullah, he said, especially people who go abroad also. Because that's also my experience. Now I've seen UK. And from this country, the Pakistanis who go abroad to the US and UK. Yes, some of them are able to retain their iman. Yes, even I've seen that some of them lose their iman, but Allah Ta'ala guides their children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala renews the iman and raises up a generation of iman from parents who were losing their iman. But many of the students who go, 
to study in American and British universities. Just, it's not good to Iman. Just because all of a sudden, they're in a foreign society. All of a sudden, there's some new candies in front of them. They tear off their Iman. Literally. They tear off their Iman and they chase after those pleasures. Allah Akbar Kameena. No Ahsas, no Nadama, no Haya, no Fikr. Gone. Gone. Complete servant and slave to their desires and pleasures. Allah Akbar Kameena. No, it should be the opposite. We should be the opposite. We, our niyat should be the hifazat iman There's nothing more important to us than that. <coughs> to preserve this nur, we would do anything and everything and give up anything and everything and stay away from anything and everything for the sake of this iman, for the sake of hifazat of iman, preservation of iman. <coughs> Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu said in the hadith to all of his sahaba, that if someone threatens to hang you, still you should <coughs> save your iman. If someone threatens to burn you in the fire, still you should save your iman. Allah Akbar. Some of you may know in Quran, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam story. One aspect of it, the incident between Sayyidina Musa salam and the magicians. That Fir'aun called a group of magicians who were atheist unbelievers and on top of it, practitioners of magic. Allah Akbar, to have a competition with Sayyidina Musa Islam. After that competition, they realized, just to summarize it, they realized that Sayyidina Musa Islam was the true Nabi. You see, belief in Nabuwat. <laughs> belief in Nabuwat is where it starts. <laughs> what did they believe in? They believed that Sayyidina Musa Islam was Nabiullah. They believed that he was a Rasul of Allah SWT. Yes, the second they believed that, what did they say? Qalu amanna bi rabbil alameen Rabbi Musa wa Hadu. They realized that this Nabi led them to belief in the Nabi led them to belief in Rabbil Alameen Allah Akbar Yes Then Qalu Fir'aun Amantum bihi Have you taken Iman in them? Oh Allah Akbar and Then what does Fir'aun do? Fir'aun here threatens them that I am going to cut your hand and your arm and leg from opposite sides. This is known to be an extreme type of punishment amputation. I'm going to cut your right arm and your left leg. Make you handicapped. Hmm? Handicapped and crippled for your whole life. Hmm? Do they give up on their imam? Hmm? Do they back down on their imam? Do they have history if they've been pukhta iman for hundreds of years or 20 years or 40 years? No. One second of iman, one drop of iman, ibtida of iman, but the nur of that iman was so much that they told Fir'aun, they said, right back and do whatever you want with us. Hmm? We will not give up on our iman. Allah Akbar Kameena. This is extreme. This is Quran. And every single story in Quran is for you and me, even if it's from a past Nabi, past Ummah. Allah Ta'ala put this story in Quran so me and you would learn that hifazat the iman, for the sake of iman, we will give our entire life if we are Quranic mu'min. Giving up a few pleasures to kill kibat. That's the easy thing to do. For the sake of our iman. You must do things for the sake of your iman. You must choose things for the sake of your iman. Every single day you have to live a day of your life that shows how much you value and protect and want to nourish your iman. <coughs> In the time of Sayyidina Umar anhu, there was a tabi who was caught by the enemy forces and the enemy ruler he wanted to convert him to his religion so in order to scare him he lit what he called a boiling pot cauldron of oil he said I'm going to burn you alive I'm going to burn you alive in this boiling oil if you don't renounce Islam hmm? renounce Islam and accept my religion so Tabi stood there 
and a tear came from his eye. Now when the tear came from his eye, the ruler thought that, okay, I've succeeded. I've made him scared. So then he said, okay, okay, it's okay, you come here. And then the Tabi got angry. And he said, what do you think? Do you think I shed a tear because I was afraid of this fire? Or this boiling oil? He said, no, no, I shed a tear because today I am only sad and crying over that, Ya Allah, I have only one life to sacrifice for this Iman. I wish I had a thousand lives on this day that one thousand times he would dip me into this burning oil and I would give my life one thousand times for the sake of this Iman. Allahu Akbar Kameena. Hmm? And our young men and women, hmm? they are willing to trade their Iman for a few minutes of pleasure, for a few minutes of sleep, for a few minutes of laziness, for a few minutes of idleness, hmm? for a few minutes of nothing. Yes? When they miss that fajr, what are they doing in that time? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Actually willing to give their iman away for nothing. Allah Akbar Kabira. Hmm? We don't value the nur of this iman. Don't value the nur of this iman. Another tabi. And this is the time of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. His name is Abu Muslim Khawlani rahmatullahi alayhi. Allah Akbar. There was a um, false prophet by the name Musayl Makazab. At the time, Sayyidina Bakr pretended, claimed to be a prophet. So, the Sahaba who were near that area first, before Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq and Sayyidina Mashri were able to succeed, first the Sahaba in that immediate area were told by Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, Amir al-Mu'mineen, Khalifa al Rasul to wage war against Musaylam. So this, Abu Muslim Khawlan was such a Sahaba, but he was caught. He was caught by Musaylam. And the Muhaddithin have written this story about him. And when he was caught by Musaylam al-Kadhab, Musaylam lit a huge fire. And said that if you don't accept me, any Musaylam as a prophet, I'm going to burn you in this fire. Abu Muslim Khalani said, I'll never accept you as a prophet. <laughs> I've come here to fight you in battle precisely because you claim you're a prophet. So they put him in the fire. And Allah Akbar, that same Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who cooled the fire for his Khalil, Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, same Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cooled this fire for the ummati of his Mahbub, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The fire did not burn. Fire did not burn Abu Muslim Khawlani. Now all the people around Musaylamah, they started, like all these Kufar used to say, he's a magician. <laughs> he's a magician. You better take him out of the fire and just send him back where he came from. Otherwise his magic will be very dangerous for us. So they took him out of the fire and they sent him back. And when he got freed from the fire, he thought to himself that Allah Ta'ala's special favor has come on me. Look what Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala gives. He was a tabi, he was sahib Qur'an. He knew Qur'an. So instead of going back to his nearby locality, he said, I may go to Medina Manawara. To Allah, he went to Medina Manawara Masjid Nabi. And he said, let me go to the road of my beloved Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he went to the, he prayed salah in the masjid. And Sayyidina Umar, this is the khilaf of Sayyidina Bakr, Sayyidina Umar was also praying salah. And Sayyidina Umar was a very, Allahu Akbar, sharp and astute. Gatana sahib firasat. He could tell that this person, number one, he's come from unseen face in Medina. Because you are like say I. And then the jazba with which he is going at the road, something is up. So he went to him and he said that who are you? And he said, not all Sahaba knew all Tabin at that time, right? So I said, who are you? Abu Muslim Khanani. Oh, where are you from? And he mentioned his na- area. And then Sayyidina said, oh, but from that area, there's a person called Musaylama, who is a false prophet. And he said, yes. He said, and I, Sayyidina Umar said, I heard that one person from that area went to go fight him and he was put in the fire and he wasn't burned in the fire. And then Abu Muslim Khan said yes. And Sayyidina Umar could tell the way he said yes. He says, is it you? And he said, yes, it's me. He said, okay, I'm going to take you to meet Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. You cannot appreciate for Tabi. Tabi means that person who could not meet the Prophet ﷺ after not being able to meet the Prophet ﷺ, what would be the dream come true for a Tabi? To meet Sayyidina Umar and to be invited into the home of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. 
This is the dream of a Tahabi. Dream come true. Allahu Akbar. Why? Because he valued his Imam. Even over his life, they valued their Imam. Nothing was more important to them than their Imam. Allahu Akbar. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq said the exact same thing to him that he thought. That I'm so happy to meet you, to meet that ummati of my beloved messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, whom Allah subhanahu wa taala did the same thing for him that He did for His Khalil, Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah Akbar. And my Sahaba Kram they used to say about the it's a hadith, but Sahaba Kram used to say about the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, ta'allam ta'allam nal imana, thumma ta'allam nal Quran. That first Sayyidina Rasulullah some taught us Iman and then he taught us Quran. <laughs> this is how important Iman is. But it also teaches us that Iman is something to be learned and taught and developed. It's not just by saying the kalima that we have this Iman. No, no, no. To have this level of Iman, true high level of Iman, we have to learn how this, to make this Iman. We, learn, we must learn how to develop this Iman. This is Sunnah. Sunnah of Sayyidina Rasulullah to teach people how to develop their Iman. Sunnah of Sahabi Quran radiallahu ta'ala anu majmain to learn from someone how to develop their Iman. Then after that they learn Quran. Allahu Akbar. All of you know the famous saying of Sayyidina, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala about Surah Al-Baqarah. Right? How many years? What were those years he was taking? It allowed to Surah Al-Baqarah would take minutes. It was the Iman that was required to do Amal on Surah Al-Baqarah. <laughs> and it took Sayyidina Umar years to get that. Ajeeb. Lucky shot. So if we will learn the value of Iman when we make some sacrifice for this Iman, when we make some struggle for this Iman, when we make some effort for this Iman, cannot just accept Iman because we were born in a family of Iman. If you take it for free, you will take it for granted. Many times in this world when people receive things for free, they end up taking it for granted. So if we receive this Iman for free, many end up taking it for granted. Not willing to sacrifice and struggle for the sake of Iman. There's an Urdu story that people tell in Urdu. Allah Allahualam if it's actually happened. But it's a hikai that people tell in Urdu. That there was a young man and he was where polishing his shoes and he was polishing his shoes with a very expensive cloth which is much more expensive than the shoe so somebody asked him what are you doing? the shoe cost 10 rupees let's say and the cloth cost 100 rupees he said yes I bought the shoes myself and my father bought this cloth yes jute mene khud apne paise se kareende aur karpa ho to abune kareenda tha what does it mean? <laughs> no value. <laughs> no value. Hmm? To become qadr daan. This is a sifat. Sifat, an attribute that a person should have. To be qadr daan. To do qadr. To value. Today the whole world will tell you. To be qadr daan of every other ni'mah. Hmm? Value your education. Value your time. Value your parents. Value your health. Value your job, value your home, value your employees, everything. The sit of us ek iman hai jis ki qadr dani ne karne. Baki har nemat ki qadr dani. Bas ek iman rata hai jis ki qadr dani ne karna ta. Allah Ta'ala to say in Quran, Wa ma qadr Allah haqqa qadr hi. Allah Akbar. They have not been able to value Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah ta'ala should have been valued. <laughs> they don't respect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as He should have been respected. They don't love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as He should have been loved. They don't obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as He should have been obeyed. They don't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as He should have been feared. Ma qadar Allah haqqa qadrihi. مَا قَدْرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ Allahu Akbar We will learn the value of this Iman and we make sacrifice. Even Sahabi Kram, when Allah Ta'ala proclaims in Qur'an the level of their Iman, their Iman of Sahaba has been mentioned in Qur'an as a mayar. But when? 
on the day of Badr. Now what happened to them on the day of Badr? <laughs> Allah Ta'ala describes in the Quran as if they have been dragged into the jaws and clutches of death and they're staring death in the eye. This is their state in Badr because they were outnumbered more than 3 to 1. They were outnumbered in weapons more than 10 to 1. All the asbab were telling them, all of the processes and means in this world were telling them, you're certain death. At that moment they looked to the musabbibul asbab. At that moment they had yaqeen and tawakkul and iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then when they were victorious, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about them in Quran immediately in the next ayah, أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ حَقَّ Allahu Akbar هُمُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ حَقَّ Here Allah Ta'ala is making clear the iman of all Sahaba Ikram. No one can raise their mouth against any Sahaba who was at Badr. When Allah Ta'ala says, أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ حَقَّ And MashaAllah Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Uthman, Sayyidina Ali Radiyallahu ta'ala an mujma'in All four of them are Badri sahaba. And they have the stamp of Allah ta'ala in Quran on them. That they are real mu'mins. Haqqa. You know, that being who is al-haqq is saying in his kalam, his Quran, which is also al-haqq, talking about sahaba's iman, that their iman is haqqa. Absolutely true iman, genuine iman, hmm? unadulterated iman. That is the type of iman they had. Then Allah SWT even then said even more about the iman of Saba. For in amanu bi mithli ma amantum bihi for all successive generations, Allah Taala saying in Quran, for in amanu that if they have iman. Bimithli ma amantum in the same way and likeness in which you, O Sahaba, you had iman, then fakadeh tado, then indeed they will be people who are rightly guided. The iman of Sahaba is a mayar in Quran. Yes, we are told in Quran if we have iman like they had iman, then we will be rightly guided. Who can say today that I have iman like they had iman? Hmm? About iman. Yeah, same kalima. Don't think I have same iman. I'm also Muslim. That's it, eh? Yes, you have the same kalima that they had. No doubt. You're not atheist the way they were. No doubt. <laughs> but you have iman bimithli. In the same likeness, resemblance, power, strength, certainty, conviction, passion as they did. That's where we're lacking. We're lacking in the fundamental attribute of iman. Iman. Fundamental attribute of Iman. It's not enough young man and woman to just have a Muslim name. No, no, no. That's not enough. <laughs> it's not enough to have parents who are Muslims. It's not enough. You have to have this passion of Iman. Such power in Iman. Sayyidina Rasulullah, he saw someone, there's a whole series of things that will happen at the end of time. The end of time, Yom al Qiyamah. Will not come as long as there is one person who still has iman. But all the mu'mineen die out from this world. That's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make the world end. This is one of His mercies on the believers. Can you imagine a devastating earthquake? There's nothing compared to when the trumpet is sounded and this whole earth will just be collapsed and folded up. All of the universe, yes, all of the planet earth, The entire physical universe, the entire solar system, the entire Milky Way galaxy, all of the billions of galaxies in the world, all of that will have an earthquake. (laughs) Yes. All of that. Can you imagine intergalactic stale earthquake where everything will collapse and fold in on itself into zero? (laughs) Allah Akbar. Kitna hal nak manzal ho Allah Ta'ala save mu'mineen from that. No mu'min will actually witness that cataclysmic event. That is such how much Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has valued iman. Now for you to understand another way to look at iman. This is an ilmi thing that we study in the madrasa. 
but I'll explain it to you in a simple way. Imam Shafi Rimulatala he said that it's better to say that Ana Mu'minun Insha'Allah. That I'm a Mu'min Insha'Allah. And Imam Abu Nifrata he said, no, it's better to say Ana Mu'minun Haqqa. Both of them were correct in their own angle. Imam Shafi's point was that I'm looking at the Zahir, my outward form. That yes, I'm on Iman. But as far as my batin, my inner self, I don't know if Allah Ta'ala has accepted this Iman. Imam Shafi was also looking that I am a mu'min now. But I have no idea whether I will die in Iman and then be raised on the day of judgment as Allah Dina Amanu. So that's why I say, Inshallah. Imam Abu Nifranta said that no. He didn't say, even though it was earlier than Imam Shafi, his view is that you should say, Ana mu'min al haqqa. There should be no shak. You should be absolutely firm in your conviction and resolve. That I am a mu'min and I'm going to preserve this iman. I'm going to die on this iman. I'm going to be raised up, enveloped in the nur of this iman. Ana mu'minun haqqa. And that is the way the young men and women should think today. This is a sentence every day. You should say this sentence to yourself when you wake up. Ana mu'minun haqqa. This is what you should say whenever the opportunity of sin is presented in front of you. Ana mu'minun haqqa. I must be a true believer, genuine believer, absolute believer. Don't listen to all these doubts that you may read on all these forums and questions and websites. Hmm? It's like a chayma. You did some internet surfing and you came across one historical incident and one question on that and you're willing to question your own imam? All was related back to Sayyidina Rasulullah sallam. Can you ever accept that he was a liar, al aman al-Hafiz? Because you can never accept that. Because you know he was true. That everything he said was true. Everything he recommended was true. Everything he taught was true. Everything he did was true. You should never have allow yourself to have any such doubts in any such way. This is enough for us that we know that Sayyidina al is true. We don't need to answer all the questions. We know that Sayyidina Rasulullah was a true Nabi. It's sufficient for us. That itself will solve everything. If you want to see litmus test that how strong is my Imam, what's my level of Imam, how much of nur of Imam do I have, then you have to look at your sins. And specifically, you have to look at the feeling that comes in your heart when you sin. If you sin without any feeling of remorse or regret, know that you are losing the nur of Iman. However, if you sin, but right when you, even during the sin, even during the sin, and immediately after the sin, you feel remorse and regret, self-incrimination, you feel yourself to be blameworthy and guilty, you're upset with yourself for sinning, that means you still have the nur of iman. And if you sin, and neither do you, if you don't feel the feeling of regret, <coughs> nor do you feel zero feeling, but instead you feel a feeling of pleasure and enjoyment in sin, you feel a feeling of addiction to sin, then you should be worried that I've lost all of the nur of my iman. Yes? You should be worried that I've lost all the nur of my iman. My name may still be that of a mu'min. I can still say the sentence with my tongue, La ilaha illallah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Muhammad Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but I've lost the nur of my iman. Hmm? You tell me, is your cell phone of any use when the battery is dead? Can I hold it up into you and say, no, it still has the keyboard, it still has the screen, it still has the SIM? Hmm? You say, his battery is dead. <laughs> it's of no use, it's useless. Absolutely useless. Why is it that we want to make the battery of our Iman go dead? (laughs) Never let the battery of our Iman go dead. Three reasons why people lose our Iman that our Mashaikh have taught us. Number one is that a person doesn't do shukr of this ni'mah of Iman. 
उल्ट उस पर सवाल ही उठाते हैं कि वाई डिन आई गेट दिस नेट माई ईमान एंड सो एंड सो डिन गेट दिस गिफ्ट ऑफ ईमान Did you ever ask that question about your eyes? The why so and so blind? Let me blind myself. Did you ever ask that question about your tongue? That so and so is mute. Why don't you mute yourself? Have you ever asked that question about your hearing? That why and so and so deaf and I'm hearing. Have you made yourself deaf? Is it only about iman? Is iman that one nema? That yes, Allah Taala gave you for free in your home. You want to become mahrum of that? And accept every other nema. Did you ever think that my parents have money? They gave me a car, and the other fellow doesn't. Let me give up my car. Every other nema that you got for free, you want to keep it. It's only iman that you want to give it away. Allah Akbar. Aji. Just a favorite question. Yes, in seven years, the number one question I get. I still get it. And the kid who's looking at me, we can see it in his eyes. There's no fajr, there's no salah, there's every sin in the world. <laughs> He's lost the nur of his iman. <laughs> he should ask me first about the nur of the iman. Ask me second about the iman. <laughs> hmm? Allah Akbar. So the first way we lose our iman, we don't do shukr. Every day you should do shukr. Yes, of every blessing that you have, but every day you should do shukr of the greatest blessing that you have. That Allah Taala gave you this ni'mah of iman. Allah Taala gave this blessing of iman, and there's, again, this is black and white. Lack of shukr means not shukr. There's still, there's no neutral stage here. Allah Taala said in Quran, "Washkuruli wa la takfurun." Do shukr to me. Allah Taala saying, "Be grateful towards me, thankful to me." Other, or don't be a person of kufr. Here, kufr means don't be a person who denies my blessings. But Allah Taala meant that when you deny my blessings, you are denying me. That's why He used the word kufr. When you're denying the blessings that I sent to you, is equivalent to and tantamount to denying me. So, washkuruli, do shukr every day. Do shukr, ya Allah, you again saved my iman. Oh, last night I did sin. Still in the morning, you still gave me iman. Every day you should do shukr of your iman. Second reason we lose our iman. First reason was not doing shukr. Second reason is because we don't fear losing it. That's why we lost it. <laughs> we don't fear losing it. You see, you fear losing your money. That's why you have bank account, safe deposit box, wallet, lock, key, right? Because you fear losing it, you take per- you take measures and steps to protect and safeguard it. And because we don't fear losing our iman, we don't take the measures and steps to protect and safeguard that iman. So you end up losing it. <laughs> If you had no wallet, no bank account, no drawer with a lock and key, would you lose your money? Definitely, you start losing some of it. <laughs> you lose it. Little by little, you start losing it. Hmm? Same thing with iman, because we don't fear losing. We're not afraid of losing our iman. <coughs> Third way that we lose our iman is that we hurt the hearts of other people who have iman. Yes. <laughs> the punishment for this, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, makes us lose the nur of our own iman when we hurt the hearts of other believers. We usurp, we take away their rights, their hukuk. We trample on their feelings. We belittle them, sarcastic towards them, cynical towards them, mocking towards them, snide towards them. We're angry towards them. Hmm? Did the husband ever think that when he mistreats his wife, that mistreatment of wife is going? If the wife is iman, means he's going to lose some of the nur of his iman in his own home. You believe that ghero ke saath ho raha? Apno ke saath hota hai. Yes, the child, husband with the wife, wife with the husband, children with the parent, parent with the child, sibling with the sibling. Yeah, they're hurting the heart of fellow believers. <laughs> they will lose the nur of their iman. Law hukmer. Why? Because. If we valued the nur of iman inside of us, we would have valued the nur of iman inside of them. And because they were somebody who had the nur of iman, we would treat to them. 
like a priceless golden special person because they had iman. Look, today people love the akal. Hmm? You meet someone who's a doctor or an accomplished scholar, right? So because you value what they have in their mind, you treat them special. Infinitely more than that, infinitely more than what somebody may have in their akal, you're supposed to value what they have in their qalb, in their spiritual heart. And that person who has iman in their qalb, you were supposed to view them as your fellow mu'min and treat them properly. And if we don't, there's another reason we lose our iman. Okay, then how to preserve our iman? How to preserve our iman? So what will happen if we do that shukr? Allah Ta'ala said in Quran, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ that if you do shukr towards me, if you are grateful, la azid nukum, then surely and certainly I will increase you in that blessing that you offer thanks to me for. So when we start doing shukr for our iman, not only will we preserve our iman, we will increase in iman. Not only will we preserve in our iman, we will increase in our iman. How can I make shukr daily for iman? So Sayyidina Rasulullah he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us a dua. Raditu billahi rabba wa bi muhammadin nabiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa bi islami deena. Raditu billahi rabba I am razi, I am so pleased, I am so happy that Allah Ta'ala is my rabb. Muhammadin Nabiya Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam I'm so happy and pleased that Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is my Nabi Wa bil Islami Deena and I'm so happy and pleased absolutely ecstatic eternally grateful that Islam is the Deen that I'm upon Raditu Billahi Rabba وَبِ مُحَمَّدٍ نَبِيَّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَبِلْ إِسْلَامِ دِينَ Every day at least once you should make this dua. You should make this dua. That will be a way of doing shukr for our iman. Okay, we were talking to you about Shari Sadr. In Shirahu Sudur. And what is the way that a person can get their breast and heart expanded? Hmm? Hmm. 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 Business ki baare mein shadar 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 naseeb hona jate hain. Yes. Huh? Business ki faisa mein hume shadar shadar ho jai. Nikaal ki faisa mein hume shadar shadar ho jai. No, this shadar shadar term is used in Quran for the nur of Iman. <laughs> Nur of Iman. So another way you can get that Shara Sadr. Second suburb is Ilm. Ilm of Deen. Ilm of Deen. Ilm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more and more you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have the knowledge of the word and book and kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have the knowledge of the life and teachings and message of the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the more and more you have shari sadr. Same word nur, the use in Quran, same word in hadith, al-ilmu nur, that ilm is a nur. And because Allah ta'ala wanted us to get this nur, our whole life, Sayyidina Rasulullah said, Utlubu al-ilma min al-mahadi ila al-lahad. That you should keep seeking out this ilm means keep seeking out nur. You can read it, A utlubu nur. That you should continually be seeking the nur that comes with the ilm of Allah Ta'ala and the deen of Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala from the cradle to the grave. Ye ilm bi ilm walu similtai. Ilm ilm walu similtai. You should make it your practice to sit with ulama. Some of you may be ready to formally study ilm under ulama. Some of you can informally attend a class under ulama. Right? But this ilm, like many times you recite the verse to you, كُونُوا رَبَّانِيِّينَ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تُعَلِّمُونَ الْكِتَابِ وَبِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَدْرُسُونَ That you will become an Allah wala 
by means of the ilm that you learn of the Qur'an and the ilm that you learn in dars and tadris. So we have to get this ilm. This is, but in order to get this ilm, to get the nur of the ilm, you have to stay away from sin. Otherwise you will get the ilm, but you won't get the nur of the ilm. <laughs> you will get the ilm, but you won't get the nur of the ilm. You will attend the class, you will get the information, but you won't get the nur of the ilm. That's why Imam Shafi'i in his famous three, four couplets, one of them is, فَإِنَّ الْإِلْمَ نُورٌ مِّنْ إِلَٰهِ That indeed, ilm is a nur from Allah SWT. نور الله لا يؤتى لعاسي But the nur of Allah SWT that is never given and bestowed upon the sinner. The nur of Allah SWT is never given and bestowed on the sinner who is an unrepentant sinner. But if we make tawbah and repent for our sins then we can get that nur. Sometimes this is called the nur of Allah SWT. Sometimes this is called the nur of ilm. Sometimes this is called the nur of hidayah. Sometimes this is the called the nur of nisbat. It's a nur that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts into, inside a person. If you want to check, but how do I know? Did I get the ilm alone or did I get the ilm and also the nur of that ilm? How can I check? That also the Majaik have told us. If you want to know, like when you attend a class or a talk or a lecture or a course or a workshop or a seminar, from ulama about the ilm of deen and you want to see did I get the nur also in addition to the information then the way to check is very simple that did your fear of Allah SWT go up that is the sign of the nur of ilm the nur of ilm will, is that it will make you fear Allah SWT more I'm coming in a moment to the nur of something else that will make you love Allah SWT more. <laughs> the nur of ilm is that makes you fear Allah SWT more. That's why Allah SWT said in Quran, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ إِبَادِهِ الْأُولَمَا That indeed those who fear Allah SWT the most from His righteous servants and slaves, <laughs> from His devoted worshippers, His worshipful servants, are all ulama, are the ones who have the nur of that ilm. <laughs> The nur of ilm means we will fear Allah SWT more. That's why in this day and age, for the young men and women, especially between the age of 15 and 40, if you want to preserve your iman, you have to get ilm. You must get ilm of the deen. Now maybe you may not be able to go all the way and become an alim, but you must get ilm of your deen. You must know these ayat. You must feel these ayat of Qur'an. You must know the hadith of the Prophet You must know his life. You must carry the nur of that ilm with you. You must get the fear of Allah Ta'ala that comes from this ilm if you want to save your iman. And that's another major reason why this age group has lost their iman, the nur of their iman, because they don't have the ilm. It's actually amazing how little knowledge, how little ilm, the young men and women who are from the quote-unquote English educated elites have today. Even the Pakistanis are studying at Oxford and Harvard. Their level of ilm of the average Prati Grammar School and HSM graduate who shows up at those places, even after they graduate from their places, the level of ilm of deen that they have is a trifle. So now if I told you from the ilm you get a nur, and that nur is the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then if I put in front of you a person who has just a drop of the ilm of deen, that means they have a drop of that nur, they only have a drop of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not enough. To survive in this day and age, you will need more fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To get that more fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you need more nur. And to get that nur, you need more khashiyah. Another thing <coughs> that is related to that ilm, what is fear? The other is forgiveness. Yes, for example, it comes in one hadith, Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu said that when a beggar, just to show you for contrast first, when a beggar 
begs food from someone and then they are given food, right? Then three people are forgiven. Three people are forgiven. The person who earned the money by which the food was made, that person is forgiven. Their sins are forgiven. The person who cooked the food itself, their sins are forgiven. And the person who gives the food or literally means feeds that poor person, they're also forgiven. So, in that, three people were forgiven. But another hadith, Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu said that four people are forgiven. When? When are four people forgiven? When a talib ilm asks a su'al. When a seeker and student of knowledge of deen asks a question, sincerely asks a question to learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then four people are forgiven. Number one is the talib, the student of seeker of that ilm. Number two is the alim, ustad, the one who then shares that ilm and answers this question. Number three, yes, all of those who are sitting and hearing the majlis, all of those who are sitting and hearing that question and answer, because they also sincerely wanted knowledge, all of them are also forgiven. And number four, the Mu'awineen, Muntazimeen, the people who facilitated that gathering of knowledge, who facilitated in any way whatsoever, whatever type of support, they created the opportunity for that question and answer to take place, even though they didn't ask, even though they didn't answer, even they may not have been present, even they may no longer be alive to have been in that gathering, but they did something to facilitate that gathering, then they also get forgiven. Allahu Akbar. So just like there is a fear that comes with the new word of ilm, there is also a forgiveness that comes with the new word of ilm. So two things we had to do to get that shari sadr. One was iman, the second was ilm. The other few, because we give detailed talks on them separately, I will just mention them a little bit to you. Number three, third sabab of shari sadr is love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That if you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will expand your breast and fill your heart with His nur. But to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to make one step. You have to stop loving all the loves that Allah ta'ala doesn't want you to love. You have to stop loving all those loves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want you to love. And if you can do that, then your heart will be able to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you can't do that, and you still want to love your fellow student, you want to love your colleague, you want to love your office mate, hmm? you want to love someone like that, if you cannot stop loving those loves that Allah ta'ala doesn't want you to love, you will not be able to start loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now you may think that in your mind you will love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no doubt. But remember we were talking about nur. Hmm? You will not get the nur of the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your heart when you have the zulma, the darkness of love for someone that Allah ta'ala has not allowed you to love in your heart. You won't get that nur. You won't get that shari sadr. You won't get that. You have to leave it. That's what Allah said in Quran. مَا جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لِرَجِمٍ قَلْمَيْنِ فِي جَوْفِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not put two hearts in any person. One heart. One heart for that one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why shirk. Shirk is the one sin that Allah ta'ala said. If you bring that sin to me on the Day of Judgment, in this world you can make over for that even. But if you bring on the Day of Judgment to Allah ta'ala shirk, Allah Ta'ala says, that's one thing I can never forgive. It's in Quran. Allah Ta'ala can forgive whatever He so wants, except for shirk. Now shirk can mean two types of things. Shirk can mean outwardly worshipping something else, doing sajda to an idol, fire, the sun, statue, anything else. That is known as shirk al jali in Arabic. Outward, apparent, clear, manifest shirk. Alhamdulillah, everybody here would be free from that. But there's another type of shirk. <coughs> That's called shirk khafi. That's the hidden secret shirk. That's when we set up rivals in our heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people, it means loving someone. 
loving makhluk, loving someone in creation, and because you love them, you betray your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you're infatuated with them, you betray your love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you're enamored of them, you betray your love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For some people, it's love of the dunya, it's a materialistic love. Materialistic love. For some people, it's love of the self. Ujub. Love of their own self. So we have to purify ourselves from this shirk i khafi if you want to get the nur of the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is that nur of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What happens? What is that lover beloved relationship that Allah ta'ala is offering in Quran? So six ways to understand that. One, <coughs> when you do shukr and you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah ta'ala will increase you because you were His beloved. In that blessing. Number two, if you do sabr, because you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah ta'ala will give you ajr azim. Inna Allah ma'as sabirin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will himself gift himself and his ma'iyyat to that person who does sabr. These are all the feelings of love. If you want to know the nur of love means the feelings of love. If you love Allah Ta'ala, not just in your mind, you like the idea, yes, of course I love Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, that you feel the feelings of shukr, that you feel the feeling of sabr. Third, you feel the feeling of tawbah. So the lover of Allah who feels the feeling of tawbah is necessarily forgiven, guaranteed, forgiven. Becomes the beloved of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Fourth, when you make istighfar, you seek the forgiveness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala will increase your risk. Whole topic we've given on that. Fifth, when you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when out of a feeling of love, you need dil se dua jabat mangte, right? These are the feelings of love, this is the nur of mahabba. When you make dua like that, Allah ta'ala said in Quran, astajib lakum. Hmm? Means He accepts your dua. Ijabat dua. Kabuliyat dua. That is the relationship Allah ta'ala is offering. These are the feelings of love. Number six, when you give sadaqah, even when you give money of this world, which for most people is otherwise beloved, when you give that for the sake of the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of a feeling of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah ta'ala then gives you an immense ajr, tenfold reward in this world and in the akhirah. So these are the feelings of love that a person gets in their heart when they have the nur of love. Okay, love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like I mentioned, is a topic we've done elsewhere. Number four. Fourth sabab of five. Fourth sabab of five for tonight. How to get shari sadr is the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, whole topic. Zikri kathir. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu dhkurullaha zikran kathira. O you who have iman, you should remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot. You should remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abundantly. You should remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala excessively. How much? Alladheena yadhkuroon allaha qiyaman wa qa'udan wa ala junubihim. That they remember Allah ta'ala so much, that whatever their physical condition is, they remember Allah ta'ala when they're standing, they remember Allah ta'ala when they're sitting, they remember Allah ta'ala when they're lying on their sides. How much? How much do they remember Allah? رِجَالٌ لَا تُلْهِيهِمْ تَجَارَةٌ وَلَا بَيْءٌ أَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ That even when they're engaged in trade and sale, they're doing anything in this world, they're in business, they're at work, they're in the office, they're in the shop, they're in the university, they're in the college, even then they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That much if you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you will become a person of dhikr kathir and that person who does dhikr kathir then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the nur into his heart. Allah ta'ala sends the nur into his heart. Here, how can I check if Allah Ta'ala is sending this nur into my heart? Allah Ta'ala said in Quran, فَذْكُرُونِ أَذْكُرْكُمْ Make dhikr of me, I will make dhikr of you. That's the nur that you get when you do dhikr of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. The nur you get is that Allah Ta'ala does dhikr of you. How can I tell? Number one, you will leave sin. You will stop doing the sins you used to do. What's happening? That's Adhkurkum. That's Allah Ta'ala remembering you. That's Allah Ta'ala putting nur inside of you. That's Allah Ta'ala increasing your capacity, my capacity, our capacity, reducing that capacity to sin. And the second <coughs> is that you will become a person of ibadah. Salah, dua, Quran, durood, istighfar, dhikr, kalima, tasbih. 
Why? Now this is the understanding of La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. I have no ability to stay away from sin and no might or power to do righteousness and virtue except that Allah Ta'ala gives me tawfiq to do that. Where is that tawfiq coming? That's the nur of zikr. In fact, one step further, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa qadam allahu wajhu used to say that whenever a believer does zikr, they do the zikr of Allah Ta'ala in between two of Allah Ta'ala's zikrs of them. They do the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in between two of Allah Ta'ala's zikrs for them. First, Allah Ta'ala remembers them by putting His nur into their heart that gives them tawfiq, then they do the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then when they do the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah ta'ala remembers them again, for the guruni of the gurgum, then again Allah ta'ala remembers them by putting again a nur into the heart. So twofold nur <laughs> that a person who does zikr gets. No Akbar. Many ways of doing zikr. One new way I will mention to you today and that is called doing zikr through your amal. Your very actions, your very way of life, your very lifestyle, your way of walking, your way of talking, your way of looking, your way of eating, your way of sleeping, your way of working, your way of studying. Every single amal can also be a zikr of Allah SWT. And one is qalbi zikr, lisani zikr, that's Many, we covered that. Amali dhikr. To be the living, breathing dhakir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Imam al-Rabani, Shaykh Ahmad Sir Hindi, Mujadda al-Fistani, Rehmullah ta'ala's maktubat used to say that any single thing that any believer does, that he does for the sake of and according to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that counts as dhikr. Allahu Akbar. Now how much easier could it have become? <laughs> but even then we're mahroom of that. <laughs> even then we don't do that. How many of us can say that my very, very way of life is zikr? My way of studying and walking and talking and eating and acting and looking and speaking and interacting is zikr. All of that could be counted as a zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it was done for the sake of His pleasure and done in a manner that was pleasing to Him. So we have to increase that amali zikr in our life. And that's another reason why we're losing this nur. If you look at the lifestyles of people, it's empty, empty of zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Neither is what they're doing pleasing to Allah, nor were they doing it for the sake of the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is absent from their equation. <laughs> the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not even on their horizon. They're living their own life in their own way according to their own wishes, their own pleasures, their own mizaj, hmm? their own mizaj, their own tabiat, not according to Allah Ta'ala's mizaj. Hmm? Easy way for you to do zikr. Whenever you do a good deed, amal is salih, whenever that happens, the way to do zikr of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, make dua for the kubuliya of that good deed. Whenever you sin, the way to do zikr at that moment is to make do, make istighfar and tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seek the forgiveness, beg for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever you are happy, you get any joy, happiness in this world. The way to do zikr, do shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whenever you are sad or faced with some difficulty, trial, test, tribulation in this world, the way to do zikr is to do sabr. To be patient by relying and depending on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the fourth way to increase our shara sadr, to get that nur, is the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the fifth and final thing for tonight, fifth and final thing for tonight, how to get shara sadr, how to get that nur, right, is to be a person of ihsan and akhlaq with makhluk and insan. To be a person of akhlaq with makhluk and to be a person of ihsan with insan. This is another way to get that shara sadr. Don't you see in Sahih Bukhari, Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu said about a woman huh, who was badkar, prostitute woman of the Bani Israel. 
She had akhlaq with makhluk. She saw a dog who was thirsty. She lowered her shoe into the well and she took water in her shoe. How much water could fit into a woman's shoe? Huh? <laughs> Allah Akbar. And she gave just that amount of water to the dog, but she had akhlaq with makhluk. Allah Ta'ala put the nur of iman into her heart. <laughs> Allah Akbar. <Gabira. laughs> Have akhlaq with makhluk. And have ihsan with insan. That alhamdulillah. Such a great history of our ummah. Hmm? Greatest example. Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Who was really muhsin insan. <laughs> muhsin insan. The kindest of any prophet ever. To those who disbelieved in him. <laughs> Let alone those who believed in him. <laughs> to those who disbelieved in him. This could be a whole separate topic. <laughs> The kindness of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallam to each and every one who disbelieved in him. The husnizan, the optimism, the gentleness, the compassion, the caring to be a person of ihsan with insan. And again, you don't have to search for strangers. They're insan right there in your home. They're insan right there in your classroom and your campus. They're insan right there in your neighborhood. They're insan in your workplace, your clinic. They're right there. <laughs> to become a person of ihsan with insan, even more. Because <laughs> out of all the makhluk, the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most honored is that of insan. So if that woman could have akhlaq with makhluk with a dog and get iman, then imagine if you were to become a person of ihsan with insan, Allah ta'ala could put the nur of iman back in your heart. But again, Allah Akbar, what a tragedy. <laughs> Even here, the young men and women, they fail. <laughs> yes. You look at their behavior, their manners, etiquettes. <laughs> Not a person of Ihsan. <laughs> Not a person of Ihsan. They don't treat the household staff properly. They don't treat some of their own friends properly. They don't treat their siblings, parents properly. They don't treat their juniors in the university properly. It's missing. It's also missing. <laughs> also missing. Lack ihsan with insan. When our Nabi was the ihsan with insan. We are ummati. <laughs> How sad would it be for an ummati not even to reflect one drop of their Nabi. Hmm? For an ummati not even to reflect one drop of their Nabi. So the fifth way. Right? In this way, the way to get this nur is to seek the forgiveness of people that we've hurt. That is the first place to start. To seek the forgiveness or make amends. وَالسُّلْهُ khair To make amends, to patch up, to reconcile with those who we have hurt or offended. If we can even do that, Allah Ta'ala will put the nur back into our heart that will also be a suburb of Shar his salib. The last thing for tonight is that we have to have ihsas. We have to have ihsas that we have lost this nur. Once our shaykh, he said that there are two words in Urdu that are very difficult for people to say about themselves. <laughs> and unless they're willing to say it, they won't be able to change it. And that's number one, me dunya darhu. And number two, me guna garhu. Aaj ye bhi khatam ho gaya. Yes? 10, 15, 20 years ago, people who sinned would say, and not rewaiti torpar, actually would say, me guna garhu. Mante te. Namaz ne parte te, kete te me guna garhu. Apne aap ko waqi guna garhu samajte te. Bad nazri karte te, kete te ki me guna garhu. دل میں مانتے تھے کہ وہ گناہ گار ہیں اب مانتے بھی نہیں ہیں yes. مانتے بھی نہیں ہیں get offended اللہ حکمر get offended I'm not saying I want to call you گناہ گار or you should call anyone گناہ گار I'm saying we each and every one of us me and every one of us should call ourselves گناہ گار یہ بھی ایک چیز ہوتا ہے یہ بھی ایک چیز ہوتا ہے 
Even from this is the beginning. Allah Ta'ala can put the nur in. And we should say it. Min dunya dar admi. You know, deen dar. <laughs> and then the dunya dar. <laughs> should accept it. <laughs> Acknowledge it. Right? Accepting and acknowledging is the very beginning of the journey. <laughs> Again, I'm not saying I'm calling you or you call me or anybody calls anyone. Each and every one of us, me and you, we should view ourselves as these two things. If we view ourselves as these two things, and you know what happens, then the remorse starts coming in. And that's why people don't like to think that anymore. They don't want to feel the sting of their sin. They want to be desensitized, immune, unfeeling of their sin. Boy, happy-go-lucky. <laughs> right? But if you're willing to say these two words about yourself, then you will feel the sting of your sin. People don't like it, I'm telling you, especially in this class. It's amazing. <laughs> Even Zahiri Torpar, <laughs> the people who have the dunya, they don't like to be told that. They don't like to be told that they have to view themselves as dunya da. And the people who are empty of a'mal, empty of amal saleh they don't want to view themselves as gunagar. <laughs> ہاں یہ اپنے آپ کو اللہ تعالیٰ کو پیش کرنے کے بھی ایک انداز ہوتا ہے کہتا ہے میں دنیا دار ہوں میں گناہ گار ہوں آپ میرے پروردگار ہیں میں اس پر نہیں ہٹا اگرچہ ایمان کا نور میرے دل سے نکل گیا ہے ایمان کی تصدیق میرے دل سے تو نہیں نکلا ایتھیس تو نہیں بنا ابھی بھی ایمان والا ہوں آپ ہی کہو بس وہ تیسے میں آپ جیسے ہوں آپ ہی کہوں جتنا کچھا سودا کیا ہے سودا تو کیا ہے اپنے آپ کو پیش کرنا پڑتا ہے اللہ تعالیٰ کی مرگاہ میں آجی کے ساتھ ان کی سانے کے ساتھ آنسٹی کے ساتھ آنسٹی کے ساتھ ہم کتنے پانی میں ہیں وہ صرف اللہ تعالیٰ اور ہمیں پتا ہے یہ راز ہوتا ہے دعا میں اصل چیز دعا میں جو دل کی دعا ہوتی ہے اس کو وہ کہتے ہیں کہ آپ اللہ تعالیٰ کو وہ پیش کرو کہ صرف اللہ تعالیٰ اور آپ جانتے ہیں اس کو کہتے ہیں دل کی دعا پیش کرنا پڑتا ہے اپنے آپ کو یہ بھی پیشی جو ہے نا یہ بھی اللہ تعالیٰ کو بہت پسند آتا ہے بہت پسند آتا ہے جتنے بھی نلائق ہیں جتنے بھی دور ہو گئے جتنے بھی غافل ہو گئے بس ایک دفعہ پیش کر لیں ایک دفعہ اپنے آپ کو جیسے بھی ہیں اللہ تعالیٰ کو پیش کر لیں اللہ تعالیٰ دوبارہ وہ نور بیچتا ہے میں یؤمن باللہ یہدی قلبہ اپنے ایمان کی تجدید کریں ایمان کی حفاظت کریں اللہ تعالیٰ ہم سب کو اس ایمان کی نور کی قدر نصیب فرمائے اور اس نور کی حفاظت کرنے کی توفیق عطا فرمائے اس نور کے ایک سیکنڈ چینس ہمیں عطا فرمائے وہ آخر دعوانا الحمدللہ رب العالمین اللہ کی جی سبحان رب العالم وحام اللہ وصلی علی سیدنا محمد وعلی آلی سیدنا محمد و بارک وسلم ربنا ظلمنا انفسنا و انم تکفر لنا و ترحمنا لنکوننا من الخاسرین یا اللہ رب کریم یہ بس نعمہ و ایمان یا اللہ we fail to do شکر of this نعمہ we fail to do قدر of this نعمہ we fail to do حفاظت of this نعمہ یا اللہ we are presenting ourselves to you on this night Ya Allah, we ask that you restore to us the nur of our iman. We ask that you do in sharaf all of our sudur. Ya Allah, we ask that you cast your nur into our kulub. Ya Allah, there is nothing that we want in this world more than that nur. There is nothing that we want in this world more than your nur. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we ask that you forgive us for all of the things that we did, all of the foolish decisions we made, all of the laziness we had in our life, all of the sins that we committed. Every single thing, Ya Allah, we have done to lose that nur. Ya Allah, but we are turning to you tonight, Ya Rabbi Kareem. You are Al-Hadi, Ya Allah. You are Al-Rahman, Ya Allah. You are Al-Rahim, Ya Allah. You are Al-Hanan, Ya Allah. You are Al-Manan, Ya Allah. You are At-Tawab, Ya Allah. 
You are a tawab, ya Allah. Ya Rabbi Kareem, put the nur of your maghfara into our heart. Put the nur of your rahma into our heart. Put the nur of your hidayah into our heart. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we ask you to put your nur into the heart of every mu'min and mu'mina alive. Put your nur into all of our hearts, Ya Rabbi Kareem. Take out the zulmat of kufr. Take out the zulmat of fisk. Take out the zulmat of sin. Take out the zulmat of bihyai. Ya Allah, take out the zulmat of all the unlawful loves that we have. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we are begging you to take out all of those loves for you don't want us to love and to put in our heart all of those loves that you want us to love. Ya Rabbi Kareem, our heart is for you. Our life is for you. Our body is for you. Everything that we have is for you. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we want only and only one you. We want only and only your nur. Ya Rabbi Kareem, accept this desire from us on this night. We have nothing. We have done nothing to earn you, nothing to deserve you. But Ya Rabbi Kareem, still we want you. Ya Rabbi Kareem, it is your shan that you gift yourself to those who don't deserve you. We are amongst your undeserving, sinning, unworthy, hypocritical servants and slaves. Your sinning, knockous servants and slaves. But Ya Rabbi Kareem, we are your servants and slaves. Nahnu ibaduka, Ya Allah. Wa anta rabbuna, Ya Allah. Allah maj'alna من عبادك الصالحين اللهم اجعلنا من عبادك الصالحين من الربانين التوابين من المؤمنين المخلصين من الصديقين والصادقين يا الله يا رب كريم يا رب كريم همارا قناهك ما فرما همارا غلطي وخطاهك ما فرما يا رب كريم آبني أبنى نور هم يتايا ہم اس نور کو ضائع کر بیٹھے ہیں ہم اس نور پر داہ کر ڈالے ہیں یا رب کریم کسی نے بے حیائی کے ذریعے سے اس نور کو مٹایا کسی نے جھوٹ بھول کر اس نور کو مٹایا کسی نے نماز قضا کر کر نور کو مٹایا کسی نے بد اخلاقی سے نور کو مٹایا یا رب کریم ہم بے نور ہو گئے ہیں ہمارے دل کو پر نور کر دیجئے دوبارہ اپنے نور ہمارے عطا دلوں میں عطا کر دیجئے ہمارے بھی صدر کو شرح کر دی دے ہمارے بھی شرح صدر نصیب کر دیجئے یا رب کریم آپ نے تو فرمایا نور من رب ہی یا رب کریم ہم وہی والا نور چاہتے ہیں وہ لذت چاہتے ہیں جو اس نور کے ساتھ وابستہ ہے یا رب کریم ہم تمام ناجائز لذتوں سے توبہ کرتے ہیں اس توبہ پر قائم دائم رہنے کے لئے ہمت ہمیں نصیب فرما استقامت ہمیں نصیب فرما نفس کی سستی سے ہمیں بچا نفس کی مکاری سے ہمیں بچا شیطان اور تمام شیعتین کی مکاری سے ہمیں بچا یا اللہ رب کریم ہمیں مضبوط ایمان نصیب فرما ہمیں بھی اولائق المؤمنون حق میں سے منا یا رب کریم ہمیں صحابہ والے میاری والے ایمان نصیب فرما یا رب کریم ہمیں ایمان کی تمام صفات نصیب فرما یا رب کریم ہم بہت دور ہو گئے ہیں بہت دیر بعد آپ کے پاس آنے ہیں مگر یا رب کریم ہم سب آپ کی نسبت سے آپ کی رضا حاصل کرنے کے لئے جمع ہوئے ہیں یا رب کریم ہم للہ فلہ بیٹھے ہیں ہم آپ کی محمد رضا سیکھنے والے طالب کی مجلس ہیں یا رب کریم اس طلب کو قبول کر دیجئے ہمیں ہمیشہ اس طلب کا نور نواز کر دیجئے فرما دیجئے یا رب کریم ہم اب تک نہیں بن سکے یا رب کریم بنا دیجئے اپنے پسند کی مطابق بنا دیجئے اپنے رضا کی مطابق بنا دیجئے یا رب مقلب القلوم قلب القلومنا و ثبت اقدامنا عدد ایمان یا رب کریم ہمیں ٹھوس بنا دیجئے ہم خود اپنے آپ سے تنگ آگئے ہیں کچھے ایمان لے کر پھر کر ہم خود اپنے نقصان کر چکے ہیں ہم خود اپنے دو رنگ رنگی سے باز آنا چاہتے ہیں یا رب کریم اس دو رنگی کو لے دیجئے اپنا یک رنگ یا یک رنگی دے دیجئے اس دل کا زنگ لے دیجئے اپنا نور کا رنگ عطا کر دیجئے یا رب کریم آپ تو ان نور ہے آپ کے دین بھی نور ہے آپ کے نبی بھی نور ہے آپ کے قرآن بھی نور ہے یا رب کریم ہم مؤمنین بھی نور بننا چاہتے ہیں ہمیں بھی نور والا مؤمن بنا نور والا متقی والا مؤمن بنا یا رب کریم تقوی کا نور ہمیں عطا کر دیجئے سنت کا نور ہمیں اپنا دیجئے اپنی معرفت کا نور سے ہمارے باطن کو سجا دیجئے یا رب کریم 
احسان اور اخلاق کے نور سے ہمیں معاملات کو سجا دیجیے یا رب کریم ہم اخلب اخلاق ہیں با اخلاق بننا چاہتے ہیں ہم سب کو بے اخلاق والا بنا یا رب کریم ہم بے عبادت ہیں عبادت میں غفلت والے ہیں یا رب کریم ہمیں حضوری والی عبادت نصیب فرما لطف والی عبادت نصیب فرما استقامت والی عبادت نصیب فرما یا رب کریم ہمیں علم نصیب فرما آپ کا علم عطا فرما دین کا علم عطا فرما ہمارے دین کا علم پختہ بنا اور دین کا علم کا نور ہمیں نصیب فرما خشیت والا دل عطا فرما خوف خدا ہمیں نصیب فرما یا رب کریم ہمارے دلوں کا اپنی محبت سلیبریز فرما محبت الہی میں ہمیں چور فرما یا رب کریم ہمیں بھی اپنے عشق کا جام کا نشہ عطا فرما اور جب بھی آپ کے ساتھ جو محبوب اور محب ہیں ان سب کی محبی اور محبت اور محبوبیت بھی نصیب فرما یا رب کریم ہمیں بھی ذکر والا بنا ذکر کثیر والا بنا ہمیں ہر عمل کو ذکر بنا ہم چاہتے ہیں کہ ہمارا جینا اٹھنا بیٹھنا رہنا سہنا سب آپ کی یاد کی نسبت میں ہے وہ یا رب کریم ہمارے اس پر یاد کو قبول فرما کوئی لمحہ ہمیں غافل نہ بنا یا رب کریم گناہوں سے نجات عطا فرما گناہ کی لذت سے ہمیں نجات عطا فرما گناہ کی توجہ کی طرف ہونے کی نجات عطا فرما یا رب کریم سیو اس میں اٹریکشن آف سین دا اپرچونٹی آف سین دا ٹیمپٹیشن آف سین دا ایڈکشن آف سین دا ڈیزائر آف سین دا انکلینیشن آف سین یا رب کریم وی وانٹ دیٹ یو ریموو فرام اور ہارٹس ایون دا اویئرنس آف سین میک اس سو اویئر آف یو دیٹ وی ار ان اویئر آف سین میک اس سو فل آف نور دیٹ دیر از نو سپیس فار دا ظلم آف سین یا رب کریم یو سیڈ ان قران اللہ ولی الذین امنوا یخرجہم من الظلمات الى النور یا رب کریم ہم بھی الذین امنوا ہیں آج دوبارہ ایمان کی تصدیق کی ہے یا رب کریم ہم بھی ظلمات میں سے پھنسے ہوئے ہیں یا رب کریم اپنے ولایت والا معاملہ فرما ہمیں اپنے ظلمات سے نکال کر نور نصیب فرما یا رب کریم جو مانگے وہ بھی عطا فرما جو مانگنے چاہیے تھا نہ مانگ سکے یا رب کریم وہ بھی نصیب فرما ہم سب میں سے جو بھی ہم سب میں سے جو متوقع رکھتا ہے دعا کی درخواست کرتے ہیں امید رکھتے ہیں کہنا چاہتے تھے نہیں کہہ سکے یا رب کریم سب کو ان دعا میں شامل حال رکھ دیجیے پوری امت کو اپنے ولایت نصیب فرما اس امت کو نور والا امت بنا یا رب کریم امت مسلمہ جگہ جگہ پریشان ہے جگہ جگہ مظلوم ہے فتنہ فساد کا زمانہ ہے نوجوان بے ایمان بے حیا ہو کر جانے یا رب کریم آپ بھی اپنے ہدایت کے جوش فرما یا رب کریم جتنا کفر کے قوت جوش میں آنا ہے یا رب کریم آپ بھی اپنے مدد نصر کو جوش میں لا فرما یا رب کریم ہم سب کو ہدایت نصیب فرما یا رب کریم جو بیمار ہیں ان کی شفاء کاملہ آجل مستمر عطا فرما ہم سب کے عزیز اکار بسات میں شائق جو قریب ماضی میں یا پہلے میں جو فوت ہو چکے ہیں سب کی مغفرت عطا فرما یا رب کریم ہمارے ایک بچے جس کی سانس کا انتقال ہوا ہے یا رب کریم اس کی بھی مغفرت عطا فرما اگر زندگی میں کوئی بھی عمل آپ کو پسند آیا اس عمل کی نسبت سے ان کے تمام عبادات کو قبول فرما ان سب کو صبر جمیل کرنے کی توفیق عطا فرما یا رب کریم امت کے نوجوان پر خصوصی رحمت نازل فرما جو شر کی قوت ہے ان کو دفع فرما یا رب کریم آج آپ کے نبی کریم سسم کے امتی یا رب کریم حرکتیں میں پڑ گئے ہیں گمراہی میں پڑ گئے ہیں مشکلات مصیبت میں مبتلا ہیں یا رب کریم آپ کے پیارے محبوب سسم نے جو امتی کے لیے جو دعا فرمائے ہم سب کے حق میں ان دعا کو بھی قبول فرما یا رب کریم ہمارے عزیز جس وقت ہاسپٹلوں میں ہے یا رب کریم اپنے خصوصی رحمت ان کے نازل فرما جسمانی بھی شفا عطا فرما روحانی بھی شفا عطا فرما یا رب کریم ہم سب کو اپنی ایمان کی قدر کرنے کی توفیق عطا فرما ربنا تکمل منا انکا انت السمیع العلیم وتوب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله تعالى على حبيبه سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين